Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you for joining us for worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica on this third Sunday of Easter. We begin with the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks to God for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, from the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is the water of life. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Come and join me as we celebrate the 50 days of Easter. Let's listen to today's gospel story. The disciples' eyes opened wide with surprise. Cleopas and his friends said they just saw Jesus alive. Could it be true? The disciples wondered. Suddenly, Jesus appeared. Peace be with you, he said. The disciples jumped in surprise, then ducked in fear. You can't be Jesus. Jesus died, exclaimed Peter. It must be a ghost, shouted John. Don't be afraid, said Jesus calmly. Look at my hands and feet. Touch me. Ghosts don't have skin and bones. Even though they could see his hands and feet, Jesus saw that the disciples did not believe. Do you have anything to eat? Jesus asked. The disciples gave Jesus some broiled fish. They watched as Jesus ate it all. Everyone gasped. Ghosts don't have hands and feet, but they could see Jesus' fingers and toes. Ghosts can't eat, but they saw Jesus eat the fish. One by one, the disciples believed. Jesus, you are alive, they cheered. Jesus smiled. I have died and come back to life for you, Jesus told them. You are forgiven of your sins. You must share the good news with everyone. So even though we can't see Jesus like the disciples did when he came back, we still believe in the power of God and the resurrection of Christ coming back to life. We know that in the waters of baptism, all our sins are forgiven. And we are made new in Christ. We are given new life with Jesus. We are filled with God's love and God's grace. And it is our job to go out and share the good news and tell everyone we meet that Jesus is alive, that Jesus gives us life and love. Let's say a prayer, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for your son Jesus, who died so that we could have new life so that our sins could be washed away in the waters of baptism. Make us new. Make us holy in you. And be with us as we go out into the world to share the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the third chapter. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety you had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer you given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance and did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, but his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance and did also your rulers. 
In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John's third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone does what is right, is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and they thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts rise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that I am myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. children last thing at night as they are going to bed and I make the sign of the cross on their forehead. 
Sometime in this last year, Thomas, my oldest, began to give me that same blessing. And when he did, I thanked him because I needed to hear those words too. To be reminded that I am a child of God. And then it morphed into a blessing we give to each other as I send them into school for the day. You are a beloved child of God. God bless you and keep you. That's also the blessing that I give to people as they come forward to receive a blessing instead of communion. You are a beloved child of God. God bless you and keep you. Our second reading for this day says this, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Beloved, we are God's children now. We are God's beloved children. That is the good news for us this day. And it's what I hope my children hear each day as I send them off into the world or send them into sleep. It's what I hope people hear when they receive the blessing. And I just don't want people to hear it. I want them to know it and to live it. I want them to know that it matters that they're children of God. It matters to me that I'm a child of God. And it matters to everyone in the world. Our second reading this day gave me a chance to contemplate for a bit why it makes a difference that we are children of God. Why it matters in our lives that we would be called children of God. And I have a few reasons. The first is that it implies a deep relationship with our parent God. Some of us have had the gift of having really awesome parents. And some of us struggled with the parents we were given. And many of us had imperfect parents that were sometimes awesome and sometimes just didn't get it right. But God, God is the parent that we wish we all had. And I close my eyes and I dream up what God the parent looks like. A couple images come to mind. One is that of a Disney character-like cartoon father, big and towering and strong and joyful and cheery. And around him are all these little children and they're playing with him and they're climbing upon him and he's laughing and they're laughing and there's so much joy and that mutual delight between parent and child. The other image I have is of a warm and loving mother God with a bosom ample enough for us to all be gathered in, to be engulfed in love if we were to lay our head upon her chest. I suspect you might have different images in your head of a parenting God. I hope whatever those images are, that they're filled with love. I hope they're filled with joy and delight. I hope they're filled with deep assuredness of deep connection. This is the gift of being a child of God, of being God's children now. We are given the relationship we long for with God, the one where God is dependably present with love and guidance and joy and delight. That relationship is ours as children of God. But that isn't the only gift. There are more gifts. You see, in the time that this text was written, being adopted as a child of God wasn't just about compassion. You see, when people adopted people in this time, they didn't adopt orphans out of compassion. In fact, many people were adopted instead as young adults or adults. Adoption was more about inheritance and name. 
Once a man was adopted to carry on the name of a childless family, the adopted son would sever ties with the old family, and that would include relief of any sort of debt that may have been under the name of the old family. And that one would become a whole new person in a new context with a new inheritance and name. We are God's children now. Our ties are severed to whatever debt we owed under our previous identity as sinners. We are whole new people in a new context with a new inheritance. And our inheritance is forgiveness. And our inheritance is abundant life. Our inheritance is resurrected life as we in this season of Easter celebrate the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Our inheritance is eternal life with God. And the gift of this inheritance is ours because we are God's children now. But that isn't even the end of it. Do you know the game you play when a child comes into the world? The game where you try to see which parent it looks like? I, for one, look just like my dad, and Sam, my youngest, looks pretty much just like me. Mostly the hair gives it away. Or think about it, the moment when you realize you're acting exactly like one of your parents, which is sometimes a good gift and other times it's not. I do not want to have the same impatience my dad had about standing in lines, but I have it. I do want to love creation as he does, and I do. I do want to love my kids with deep affection and lots of cuddles, like my mom did. And I do, but I also try to do so many things on my own, like she did. I'd like to be different. But we, we are God's children now. And we are evermore being shaped into being like God. To carry God's characteristics in our own being. To be pure like God is pure. To be evermore like God, to resemble the character of God by doing what is right. By doing what is just by being people without sin and by loving one another with that love that comes from God. As children of God, we take on the characteristics of God. And that is part of this gift. But what I really hope for people, what I really think is the best gift of being a child of God now, is that we can recognize where our identity and life purpose come from. Where we come from. I want my kids to settle into sleep knowing that they are God's. That God has claimed them and knows them and loves them. I want the same when they head into school that whatever place they find that they don't fit that day, even in the midst of the social system of elementary school that happens, wherever they don't fit, they can remember that they fit with God, that they are God's child, that that's where their identity lies. In the same way the author of First John was talking about this too, you see, he was writing to people who were struggling with the ways the world was calling them to find their identity outside of their relationship with God. And the author wrote to remind them of where their identity lay. That same thing goes for us too. Friends, we know that the world is not an easy place to be. We know that there are pressures to do this or to be that, or to live in this way, or to show up in that way. And it can be hard to live in the world and to be tossed about and pushed and pulled by all of these expectations. 
And my hope is that as we realize and live as children of God, we realize we are deeply rooted in that identity. And that we're able to withstand the push and the pull and stay true to who we are. Beloved children of God. Friends, you are God's children. You are God's children right now, today, and tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that. As God's children, you are loved, so deeply loved and delighted in by our parent God. And you are gifted. You are gifted with the inheritance of mercy, forgiveness, abundant life, resurrected life. And you are evermore coming to resemble the God who loves you so, with acts of justice, with loving kindness. And your identity, your vocation, who you are, is rooted and found in that simple phrase. You are God's beloved child. So receive this blessing and hold on to it. You are a beloved child of God. God bless you and keep you. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our prayers of intercession. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Creator, you bring forth all life in earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places and protect the climate, that this planet will sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Saviour, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Our God, our Elder, you care for all our children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope and uncertainty, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Our God, our Centre, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and, pu and purpose in our ministry at Mount Olive. Move us to love our neighbours as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Sunday Chaz. It will be on April 14th, so depending on when you're watching this video, there's still a chance to come. It's at 5 p.m. It will be full of good music and community. I also invite you to attend our fairy tale ball. That is on Saturday, April 20th, and that will be from 10 until noon in the parish hall. I hope you'll come. You're welcome to come dressed in costumes. I will, if I get my costume be a fairy godmother. It should be a delightful time. Uh, please uh, plan on attending. I also invite you to contribute cans of chicken noodle soup. That's what we're collecting for our little pantry this month. We also have some openings for people who would take um, daily, uh, you pick one day of the week, who would take one day a week food out to our little pantry to stock it. We stock that pantry every day with 40 items or more and every day it needs new items because the community here needs that food that we're offering. Thank you for the ways that you generously support that little pantry but also the ways that you generously support the ministry that happens here at Mount Olive. If you're looking for ways to give, you can check the description of this video so that uh, you can access those ways. Thank you for your generosity.
life, creating a wondrous universe, proclaiming freedom from captivity, becoming the song of your people. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Your word is made flesh among us. With Mary in the garden, you call us by name. With Thomas beholding your wounds, you call us to believe. With sheep of other folds, we are gathered by your voice. Your word names our death and our life. A seed that falls into the earth and dies. Rain and snow that come down from heaven to water the earth. A vine in which we abide. Through your word, you appoint us to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks. By your living word, we are witnesses of these things. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Give us wisdom to declare what we have heard, what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Fill us with strength to love, not in word or speech alone, but in truth and action. With every creature on heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, we join in the hymn of all creation as we thank you, O oh God, for your life-giving word. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 